Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Now in this video, we're going to go over exactly how to set up Google OAuth for your bubble application. So what that will allow your users to do is it will allow them to sign up with their Gmail account to your bubble application. So let's just jump in and get started. The first step that we need to do is we need to add the Google plugin. So if I search for Google right here, I can see this one come up and I want to select the one which is created by Bubble and what this plugin allows it users to do is they can log in with their Gmail account. This Gmail account will be used to create a user account on Bubble and then we can fetch their profile data from Google themselves. So now that we have this plugin created, we need the app secret and the app ID. And the way that we can get this is we need to register our application with Google themselves. So what I've jumped into now is the Google Cloud Console. So you can get here just by Googling Google Developer Console, click on the first link, you sign up obviously, and you're dropped here. So I'm in the Manage Resources section, which is the Cloud Resource Manager. What I want to do now is I want to create a new project. So I'm going to call this Test Air Dev How To Project. So you can provide whatever name that's unique to your project. I'll click Create. And once this has been created, I will select this particular project. Perfect. So. What this now has done is it's dropped me into a dashboard for this particular project and it's overlaid this navigation menu on the side. The first step that I need to do is I need to configure my OAuth screen. So the OAuth screen is the screen that users are redirected to once we tell them that they are allowed to sign up with Google. So you will see this later in this video as we go through the process. but. Just for some of an overview, that's what this is. So I'll scroll down to the API services, APIs and services section, and I will click on OAuth consent screen. What I need to do now is I need to choose, do I want the user type to be internal or external? Now I'm gonna choose external because I want any user with a Google account to be able to use my application, not just users um, within our organization. So I'll click create. I can then provide any app names. I'll say how to videos. User support email will be my email. I can provide an app logo if I would like. I then need to provide my application homepage link. So I'll jump back to my bubble apps. I'm on my index page. I'll copy this one. And I'll just remove the, all of this. Next one I need to do is I need to provide a privacy policy and a terms of service for my application. So what I've done is I've created two pages. The first page is a privacy page. So this page is where my privacy policy will live. So I can click preview, copy this one, paste that there. Just take off the debug mode equals true. And then I can also do the same with the terms of service page that I have created. So I'll copy that one and I can just pop that over there. What we need to do now is we need to provide an authorized domain. So the authorized domain is going to be bubbleapps.io. So just this one, which I'm highlighting over here. The reason why is that's the primary domain. So we need to provide this. If you do have your own domain that you've provided in your Bubble application, so for example, you've bought a domain and you've synced it up to Bubble, you should put that domain as well into here as well, as well as the bubbleapps.io domain. You then provide the developer contact information. So just provide your own email address here. So if there's any issues, um, Google knows who to contact. So I'll click save and continue. So now I'm taken to a section called scopes. So scopes really define the information which we're allowed to access from our users, Gmail accounts. So if I click on add or remove scopes here, there's a number of scopes which I can choose 
to add to this consent screen. Um, and every single scope has a description. So the two scopes I want to provide or ask for are these two. So the first one is the email. So I want to get the user's email address. And the reason why is I need that information to create and populate um, the user information and create a user account on Bubble. And then I also want their profile information. So their public information, such as their first name and last name. So when they sign up and create an account, I can add their first name and last name information to their Bubble application account. So I will click on that and I'll click update. The reason why we need to ask for this is when we go through the process of our consent screen, which I'll show you later, is as a user, you're actually informed about exactly what kind of information the Bubble application wants to request from your Google account. And in that consent screen, you as a user have the control to say yes or no. So by applying these scopes, we inform the user which information exactly we will have access to and we want their consent from. There are some which are sensitive or restricted and there's additional kind of verification measures required to get approval for these scopes with Google themselves. But for us, we've got two non-sensitive scopes right now. So I'll click save and continue. We also have test users. So in test mode, you can add test users who can log in or sign up to your application with Google. Right now, I'm not going to do that just because I'm going to use my own email address, which I've used in this Google Cloud Console to log in itself as my um, test account. So I'll click save and continue. The information all looks correct to me. So I'll click back to dashboard. So our OAuth consent screen is all ready to go. Right now we're in testing mode. When we're ready to go live, we can click publish up, but we're not ready yet. I'll jump back to our bubble application. And what we need now is we need our app secret and our app ID. So we need to ask Google to give us this information. So if I jump back here, and uh, I can click on credentials and I want to click create credentials and it's an OAuth client ID. The application type, just choose the one that's relevant to you. Mine's a web application. You can have an internally facing name. So I'm just going to give web client I, a client one here. I'm completely okay with that. And what I want to provide now is an authorized redirect URI. So what I'll do to get this one is I'll jump back to my application here and I want to check this box. And then I want to copy this information. Unfortunately, I can't click here. I can't actually highlight and copy this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to paste it here and then I'm just going to write it out here. So I know that I haven't spelt anything correctly, incorrectly. So if I look at that, looks like the same. I'll copy that and I'll pop it in here. So that's my redirect URI. So I'll create that one and perfect. I've got my client ID in secret. So I'll copy that. I'll pop the ID here and here. I'm going to use the exact same one for the testing environment as well as the live environment, just so that I can test it in my testing environment and make sure it's all working correctly. Okay, perfect. So our Google plugin is now all set up. So hypothetically, we can allow users to log in with their Gmail account and fetch their profile data, but we can't just yet because we need to build the workflows and the actions in Bubble itself to allow for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my sign up page where I've got a button which just says sign up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this workflow. And what I've done is I've added a step, which is just sign up or log in with the social network and I can choose Google there. So that will redirect the user on the page to sign up. And what I also want to show you is I want to show you how you can access the information that you re receive from Google. So I'm going to pop in a text box right here. I'm going to insert dynamic data and 
what that dynamic data is, is it's going to be the current user. We can click on Google and we can provide the data fields which we've received from Google. And these ones are going to be the email, first name, last name. So I'll just click first name so we can check that it's working all correctly. And I'll click preview. So I'll click sign up. Perfect. So I'm redirected to the, the consent screen, which I talked about setting up before. And what we can see here is we can see the privacy policy and the terms of service information that I provided. So those links are provided for a user to access. And then here we can see what Google will share with me if I do sign up. So it'll share my name, my email address, language preference, and profile picture. And this is a reference directly to the scopes that we asked for. So because I asked for those scopes, this is the information that's being shared. Now I'm going to sign up and I can see that I've been redirected back to the same page and I've been signed up correctly. And I know this because my first name is now appearing on the page and I can tell that this user account has been created. If I jump over to my database, I can see that this new user account has just been created today. Um, and that's all been done correctly. So yeah, if you have any questions with regards as to exactly how to set up Google or for your bubble applications, please feel free to leave a comment below this video.